Okay, here's how it is. It's getting harder every year to get a film into the Comic-Con. Yeah, we barely made it in last year. And that was more luck than merit. So I was thinking this year, what about making a film specifically for a Comic-Con? Zombies? No. No zombies. But each year they ask for specific categories outside of comedy and drama and stuff. So, comic book heroes? Maybe. That's what we're here to decide. Um, categories are superhero, steampunk, sci-fi, anime, fantasy, gaming, and fan film. Ugh. So, did anyone actually come prepared? <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody about the superhero idea? Yeah, okay. Uh, it's not really a fully formed idea yet, but uh, we start outside at night, like in front of a secure building. There's a couple of security guards outside walking the perimeter. One of them's maybe kind of paranoid. Suddenly, one of the security guards is taken out. The camera reveals a hot brunette in a skin-tight catsuit, moving from one guard to another, silently taking each out. Brunette? Uh... Wouldn't a uh, hot redhead be more appealing to our audiences? Wouldn't two hotties be more appealing to, well, everyone? Okay, the brunette spy hero chick draws a gun. Suddenly, a redhead in a skin-tight, brightly colored costume with a cape lands right behind her. What took you so long, she says. There was an earthquake in Japan, the redhead responds. I'm getting it. We can add some more setup. Something like Spy Chick saying, They had two hostages inside, and at least one super guard in them. You take the super, I'll get anyone else. Wonder boobs. Right, hold it. Wonder boobs? I'm supposed to be wonder boobs? Well, yeah. Anyways, they get in. <laughs> nope. It's locked. Sweet. I can pick it. Or maybe I have laser beams coming out my... eyes. So you can fix it in post. So then the super chick, Wonder Boobs, falls over dead. She forgot using visual effects was her only weakness. Ass Assinatra is forced to go it alone. Ass Assinatra? Because you're an assassin with a super hot ass. Assassinatra has to use some high-tech device to break the security code. Figure we'd just use somebody's phone. So she goes in, shoots some guys, and saves the hostages. Go! Go! What about the supervillain? Yeah, how's she supposed to beat him without me? I don't know, she has some kryptonite-like thing with her to kill him. Ah! No, the zombies get them! Ah! No more zombies! Well, at least that's one idea. So I was thinking maybe we should do an anime. Wait, are we talking a live action styled like anime? Or, like, anime? I mean, like, anime, as in drawing and... The Japanese style. 
So, who's going to draw all that? Aw, oh, hell no! You're the only one that can draw. Well, maybe if we do some basic animation, not very many fully drawn characters, and different faces that I can copy and paste on a neutral background. Yeah, that'll be easier. Like the stock animated cartoons from the 60s? Yeah, yeah, and we'll get Zack to do it. He could do it way better than anything I could do. Oh, yeah. All right, the story? Uh, oh, yeah, so there's this guy Togasan, and he's yelling at this dude Chen. Chen! What you done for these people? I will not stand for! Togusan says. Well, sit down, you pathetic worm! Chen replies. Then swords! Defend yourself, Chen! Come at me, Togusan! <laughs> <laughs> they battle. <laughs> then a zombie! <laughs> no zombie! <laughs> What else we got? Something in uh, sci-fi, maybe? I was thinking about that. I was thinking alien device left on Earth that a human finds. Okay, lots of good stories come from that premise. Is the uh, device come from like an archaeological dig or something? No, it was accidentally thrown away by an alien in orbit. Ugh, I'm sensing visual effects. So we see the ship dumping its trash. Then we cut to a backyard, probably right out back here, since we can shoot here. There's a guy, outside, smoking a cigarette, minding his own business, when this object crashes in his backyard. He cautiously investigates. Amongst some burned junk is this partially charred pair of goggles. We see some POV shots of the goggles and there's a simple heads up display. More visual effects. At first, he can't see anything. The display changes and suddenly he sees night vision. Cool. Do we still have access to a night vision camera? I think so. Go on. He goes inside. Back to the party in progress, still wearing the goggles. He starts pressing the edge of the goggles as he walks, and it changes the settings from night vision to heat vision and, I don't know, tracking or something? Hello. Then, as he walks into a crowded room, he finds the x-ray setting. Now this is getting interesting. <laughs> We stay with his POV at first, seeing a few ladies in their undergarments. Good. Let's keep it PG-13. Oh, yeah. Then we can switch to a wide angle where we see him smirking, following his gaze with some of the ladies. Just as a dude in ladies' undergarments gets up in front of him. <laughs> Ugh. Appalled and afraid of what else he may Ugh. see, he takes off the goggles. <laughs> so, he decides to go back outside. Mm -hmm. He lights up another cigarette.
Then, after a moment, he braves the goggles again. Again, we go to a POV, and it reveals several spaceships hovering in the sky. And then zombies! <laughs> no zombies! That could be good. What else is on the list? Fan films. Fantasy. Oh, fairies! No. Yeah, that didn't turn out so well. Hey, what about combining fantasy with gaming? Like the group of people together and play like a tabletop game? Ooh, like D and D. Well, if it's anything like D and D, we can just combine it with fantasy. Oh, I got it. So. A dwarf, a druid, and a barbarian are playing a game of reality. Been done. Really? Yeah. Show you later. What if we do a study on how people can have differing imaginations? So they're all playing dwarves and druids. <laughs> I've done no damage. <laughs> One of those a five. Made, yeah, it's like a five or three. The DM starts describing some creature typical. Okay, of now you are in the lowest level of the dungeon. So a dragon. dragon. And as he continues to describe, we go around the room to each player, and I don't know, show a thought bubble. You guys are killing me with the videos. Anyways. In each thought bubble, we show the player's imaginings of what said dragon looks like. I want to flirt with a dragon. Can I flirt with a dragon? What? Flirt. Flirt with a dragon. What do I have to roll so I can flirt with the dragon? That could be funny. Uh, I think it needs a little more of a story developed, though, uh, beginning, middle, and an end. Um, what else is on the list? Steampunk. Steampunk, right. I don't know if I have it in me to do this and a steampunk web series. Why not start the web series, then? Well, I've only uh, written the pilot and outlined the first season. So let's shoot the pilot. Or even just the main action part of the pilot. Submit it. If it's well received, then we can just go on with the series. That gives us everything for the con and gives us most of the stuff for the pilot before we even need it. Okay, we can do that. Wait, what's this series about? Or at least, what would be the part of the pilot we'd be shooting? Alright, well what we would see in the pilot would essentially be the action scene without the exposition. We start in the desert somewhere. Plenty of places to choose from, just need to find some land we won't get kicked off of. This guy, Jacob, approaches a steampunk device. There are several tinkers, like mad scientist mechanic mixes, that join him near the device. Hit it, Jacob. Let's see what it does. Don't One of them, we Tink, done more tests? seems more we hesitant than the others. Run more tests. Science, we ought to run them on. It was safe. That was before we added the PCMG. I hear back near Tucson, that stuff took out a whole town. That's just poppycock. If this works the way I want it to, Ain't no one be able to stop. Who'd want to stop us? It's just a power generator. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Tink takes it. a step back just as BLAM! Ah! Jacob's hand is shot. Everyone shuffles Jacob around and draws Robert. their steampunk guns. For crimes against the U.S. Government. The U.S. Marshal has taken them for by surprise and tries to get them to surrender. So much for the easy way. They decide Fight! not to surrender. They respond with stereotypical things like, You don't stand a chance against us. Make my day, Marshal. You'll never take us alive. 
we see Tink put on some cool headphones. I am. And then the marshal does the same. Stop pushing me. Jacob is talking to himself as he activates the device. As the generator starts up and incapacitates everyone not wearing the headphones, the marshal pulls out a special gun. After a few moments of him firing it, the machine starts powering down and smoking. Tink brings in the surviving Tinkers before they can start shooting again, while the marshal arrests Jacob. Good work on the earplugs, Tink. That's it. We uh, kind of lose the phantom dust if we take out the exposition at the beginning. Uh, from what you told me, it's kind of complicated, but it does set up the whole series. Yeah, and it's pointless without it. Yeah. Did we cover all the genres? Guys, what about this? What? This! Us pitching ideas about Khan. We could cut to each pitch fully filmed. Like a collection of shorts. Nah, no one wants to see that. Sure, you say that now, but in an hour or two, it'll be your idea. Or a year later. Joe? Joe? Earth the Joe? What are we... What are we looking at? He's imagining there's a camera there. He's breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs>